question D6 this is from my student in uh, that is his uh, exercise paper I read the question a toy rocket consists of a plastic bottle which is partially filled with water the space above the water contains compressed air as is shown in the figure below you see on the picture, the compression air will push the water down, then the toy rocket will move up. Question A. At one instant, during the vertical flight of the rocket, the water of density rho is forced through the nozzle at radius r at a speed phi relative to the nozzle. Determine in terms of rho, r, and phi. Part 1. The mass of water ejected by unit time from the nozzle. Uh, that is easy. A. Part 2. The rate of change of momentum of the water. Very simple. Uh, but before we answer, I'm, I need to revise certain formula that we learned in secondary, I think, secondary school. Uh, volume of cylinder, don't forget. Volume equals to pi r square h. r is the radius. Yes. h is the height of the cylinder. That one, I think most of you remember. Number two, mass equals to volume times density. Right? Uh, yeah, sec 4 P6. Momentum. Momentum is the symbol of momentum is P. And the formula is mass times velocity. And number four, we need to use a little bit of differentiation. Uh, I think, oh, this one, I remember, this is called product rule. Right? Y equals to U times P. Then dy dx is equals to dy du dx v plus dv dx u. We need to use that later. Okay. First, the nozzle. We assume the water. We assume the water that is coming out is in the shape of a cylinder. Uh, it will come out like this which is not true of course the water will spray to the left and right but we assume is 100% vertical is the water will never spread out then <clears throat> the volume of water we use the formula V equals to pi r square h The height of the cylinder we do not know, depends on the time. We take the time to be one second. If time is one second, then the height will be phi times one. That means in one second, the volume will be pi r square phi. That's the volume. Then the mass will be Rho, ah, which is density, rho times volume. This phi is volume, by the way. It is not, uh, it's not velocity. P, rho times volume. So if you multiply that, you get pi r square phi rho. Pi r square phi rho. Then dm dt you divide by the time, and don't forget time is one second because we take one second. Uh, then dm dt equals to pi r square phi rho, same as the mass because we just divide by one. Then the momentum, uh, mass times velocity. Uh, then they ask for the rate of change of momentum. 
they specifically mention rate of change of momentum of the water ah rate of change of momentum okay this one we call it rate of change of momentum equals to dpdt ah then we apply the product rule Decimal. Um, how to apply the product rule? Sorry. How to apply the product rule? Uh, the mass. You differentiate in one term, then you keep it on another term. Velocity is you keep it on one first term and you differentiate on the second term. So dp dt equals to dm dt times p. Uh, plus dv dt times m then this dv dt here will be zero this thing is zero the reason is velocity is constant If something is constant, then the rate of change of that is zero. How do you know that the velocity is constant? I think they mentioned in the question here. Yeah. Uh, uh, they mentioned where is it? Speed v here. Yeah. The, at speed v. Speed v. The speed is constant. Yeah. So dv dt is zero. Uh, then you simplify dm dt plus v. Dm dt is this part. From the previous calculation, if you simplify, if you pi r square v square rho, yeah, pi r square v square rho. So that's the answer for part. A then part B hands show that the accelerating force acting on the rocket is given by the expression uh, f equals to pi r square rho v square mg oh very simple very very simple for question B we just show the toy rocket like this Two forces acting on it. Uh, we just call it F1 now, let's say. F1 is the force pushing it up. Is pi r square rho v square from our previous answer. Then there is uh, there's a downward force called mg, which is the weight. Yes, uh, accelerating force at the instant. So the, the, the M is changing, so it's a variable. Then the resultant force is just, just uh, you minus away, pi r square rho v square minus mg. That's very simple. <coughs> uh, Okay, uh, question C is a theoretical question, I read the question, the toy manufacturer recommends that the rocket should contain about 550 cm cube of water before take off, if the initial air pressure is 1.6 times 10 power 5 pascal, so 1.6 times the atmospheric pressure all of this water will be expelled and the pressure is just reduced to atmospheric pressure as the last of water expelled however on one flight the initial volume of water is 750 cm cube 
but the initial air pressure is was still 1.6 times 10 power 5 state without calculation uh, without calculation but with the reason the effect of this increased volume of water on the initial thrust uh, this is very simple F equals to pi r square through v square uh, F1 here F1 which is the thrust only not the resultant um, then it will be equal no change because the velocity and uh, the velocity and the radius and the density of water never never change the initial acceleration uh, the initial resultant acceleration it will change because f equals to pi r square rho v square minus mg you have a bigger m this one increase the increase in m will decrease here will decrease the resultant force yeah and it will decrease the uh, acceleration also right it will confirm it will decrease uh, final mass of the rocket and its content the final mass will be uh, increased very simple explanation because at the end after the pressure become 180 m there is still extra how much that 750 minus 550 there is still extra 200 cm cube of water which is around 200 gram uh, of water so it's a theoretical question and it's a uh, you get a good mark it's six mark <laughs> compared with the previous question you have calculation they don't give so much mark on that yeah uh, so that is question d6 your um, chapter 3 yeah chapter 3 I think about the about forces or dynamics including the collision yeah okay start with question D1 discussion 1 suppose you were seated in a car in which a plumb line and plumb line is a string with a pop was hanging from the roof sketch how you would how sketch how you expect the plumb line to incline if it does in the following scenarios okay question a the car was accelerating at a constant rate in the positive x direction so i already draw yeah i will draw I will draw the I will draw the sketching plumb line here and D one A. We assume the positive x axis is to the right. Then what is our conclusion? Our conclusion here okay I think I draw from the very very start first of all the resultant force will be pointing to the right and remember when we draw the resultant must be two arrows like this yeah 
see I draw two arrows and it's pointing to the right which means uh, which means when we after we combine all the forces it must point to the right there are two forces one is the weight and number two is the tension because it's a string with a pop the one that confirm you know the direction is the weight yeah the weight is pointing down confirm now there are two possible way of the tension one of them is wrong this is t or t here option a is pointing to the left option b is pointing to the right which one is correct uh, a is wrong why a is wrong because if you draw that you the resultant will be pointing to the left so that's why a is wrong the correct one will be b because because if you find resultant it will be pointing to right so b is correct right so we erase a ah, that's how you draw the that's how you draw uh, sketch the diagram right weight and tension how do we know we have weight first of all it's a pendulum knob and whenever they don't mention anything assume it's on earth with g equals to 9.81 how do we know we have tension? Very simple. As long as you have a string pointed to a certain object, then you have tension. There is no friction, uh, and there is no normal because it's not in contact with the surface. Very simple. How about B? The car was decelerating at a constant rate in the positive x direction. Again, we assume the positive x to be to the right and decelerating. What does it mean? Simply means the acceleration is to the left. Very simple. Your, your uh, what do you call it? The, your resultant must be pointing to the left yes see i draw the resultant must be pointing to the left okay okay the resultant pointing to the left because the acceleration is pointing to the left also uh, the weight is confirmed going down tension must be slung up and slightly to the left Otherwise, the resultant won't be to the left. Very simple. Question C. D1C, the car was traveling at a constant velocity in the negative x direction. Wow, constant velocity. <laughs> constant velocity is a very important keyword. Right, uh, we were we are trained to uh, be sensitive to this word of constant velocity. Constant velocity simply means the resultant force is zero. Uh, I let on that this is due to that because it's constant velocity. The resultant force is zero. That means it's not a positive x-axis is here to the right if x axis is to the right the resultant force is zero so it's just vertical weight and tension will be equal they cancel each other that's why the resultant is zero so very easy to very easy to uh, draw d d1 d the car was driven at a constant speed along a roundabout of which the center of curvature is to the right of the driver. Uh, 
I think you know how it works. Ah, okay. The car is traveling this way, and uh, this is called the center of uh, rotation. Then is pointing to the right, so positive X is this way. Okay. No, you don't call it positive X, but it's pointing to the right. Yeah. Then uh, your resultant must be pointing to the right, like this, with two arrows, and you, and that is because. That is happening because your tension is uh, turning, uh, slanting to the right. So that's why the result is to the right. So that's it. That's question D1. Uh, please check the next video. I think I'm going to make, I'm going to explain more of the question we did last Saturday. Last Saturday is very, was very, um, Productive. We did ten. No, ten we skip. Skip one. So we did ten. Nine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, please check out my next video. Okay. Now we do question D two. Uh, a man of mass 80 kg is falling vertically. He opens his parachute and experiences an upward acceleration. Ah, upward. That's very important, upward. Uh, it seems strange for some people why the acceleration is upward. That is because uh, the parachute make the man decelerate downwards so it's accelerating upwards yeah the acceleration is 2.4 meter per second square the mass of the parachute is 5 kg what is the value of the upward force accepted on the parachute by air ah okay Okay, okay. Uh, okay, what we do now, um, we have two objects, parachute and man. The first free body that we are going to consider is the both of them parachute plus man from oh yeah there are three forces three forces acting here uh, the tension here uh, you don't have tension because it's within the free body so you have three forces number one is the uplift number one is uplift uh, of the parachute number two is the weight of the parachute number three is weight of the man so we have three forces uplift pointing up Weight of parachute pointing down, weight of man is also pointing down. Very simple. Uh, they mention the mass of the parachute, which is 5 gram, and the weight of the man, the mass of the man is 80. Uh, the one that we do not know is the uplift. So we are trying to calculate the uplift, even though they don't ask because we need it to find the second oh they ask actually they ask for question a upward force exit upward force that means they ask for you 
they give the mass 85 no problem you can easily tell from here so the total mass is 85 kg yeah, 85 kg acceleration is 2.4 so this two information we get it from the question uh, 85 and 2.4 then we from there we calculate here f equals to ma right uh, 85 times 2.4 I get 204 so what is your conclusion uh, u minus wp minus wm is equals to 204 because this whole thing is David Salton so what is your conclusion u is equals to 204 plus wp plus wm which is 204 weight of parachute is 5g and weight of man is 80g yeah so 204 plus 85 g g is 9.81 of course right ah. then we calculate the uplift if you press calculator we get 103.85 newton then this number we need it for the for the next one no we don't need it actually yeah for the next question question uh, so the uplift we get 103 1037.85 uh, for question b what is the value of upward force exerted by the parachute on man uh, very simple we do the man only which means the mass you put 80 kg and acceleration is 2.4 meter per second square how do we get it from the question right? the question they, they, they mentioned already yeah 80 and 2.4 is from the question and if you use calculator you get 192 newton the resultant so this is resultant which means and there are two forces only normal from parachute and the weight of man free body number two is man only yeah so normal minus wm is equals to 192 so normal will be 192 plus wm which is 192 plus 80g and g is 9.81 of course then you sub in the values you get 976.8 the unit is of course newton that's our final answer that's that's the answer right so we have these two uh, that's the trick right to solve this problem you need to split up into two free body free body number one is man plus parachute uh, free body number two is man only without the parachute okay that's for question d2 quite simple